guys, it's Lindsay the Vegan Potter here. I'm going to show you guys how to make um, a shallow serving bowl with a side um, smaller bowl for dip, like a chip and dip situation. So this is what we're going for. Large shallow bowl for your chips or your fruits, veggies, whatever, and a smaller bowl for dip. These are a little bit exaggerated oversized um, because they're going to shrink as we all know when they dry and get fired. So this is about an 11 inch bowl. It's gonna shrink down to about a 10 inch bowl, about seven to eight inches across at the bottom diameter. And this is about a six inch bowl that's gonna shrink down to be about five inches. Um, the height of this shallow bowl is about two and a half. And this one is about the same. So let's get started. First, I'm going to take my larger piece of clay. This is about four and a half pounds of clay. I've already wedged up. And what I like to normally do for larger pieces, especially throwing them on a bat always, is to round out the bottom. So you can see this has a little bit of a round cone shape on the bottom. And that just helps when we go to push the clay into the wheel, it helps create a seal. And then I like to give it a few extra slaps for good measure. Okay, so we'll add some water, get that clay nice and slippery, and begin the centering process. So for larger pieces of clay like this, I do like to try to cone, and that's why I start off with a cone shape to my clay, so that it's not as effortful to achieve that initial cone. I don't cone two or three times, I just cone once, typically. So I squeeze the clay up from the base, you want to make sure you're not getting a divot no holes in the top of this. It should be nice and sort of pointy or just flat. And then once you've come up, you can use a more traditional centering method, hand on the side. This flat blade of my hand is across the top. I like to use that little bony process at the base of the pinky where it attaches to the hand, right over the center of the clay. Give a good press down. Make sure you're applying equal pressure with that side hand so that things stay intact along the edges of your clay and don't mushroom out and then you lose a bunch later. All right, so even just that coning one time typically gets my clay nice and centered as you can see. Once I'm down about as far as the height of my hand here, then I'll switch because I wanna create a wider width for this bowl. It's gonna be a wide, shallow bowl. So if I start to make the bowl with only this diameter, which is currently about six inches, I'm gonna end up with tall sides and that's not what I want. So heel of my right hand starts to make an indentation, but also begins to move that clay so this is my opening process for larger forms. Move that clay out to create my walls, right? So that was essentially digging and opening all at the same time, two steps in one. This is definitely a little bit more of an intermediate project for those of you who might be just beginning. You can certainly try this. I encourage you to try it with less clay um, so that you can get a little bit more used to the process. As we all know, if you move into <laughs> too much clay too soon, you can really frustrate yourself. And there is no need for that. All right, it all comes with time and practice and patience and perseverance, right? So I've, I've used my sponge to just drag across the center to compress the bottom of this piece so I get a nice sort of flush. It's got a, a gentle curve, but it's very subtle. This is more of a flat bottomed um, serving dish. So it stands to reason that the bottom would be more flat than rounded. Just scooping up the goop that's caught along the edge of that piece. And now I'll start to bring my walls up and out. So I'm essentially bringing them um, lifting and shaping at the same time. This tends to happen for me with larger pieces and so they just kind of combine some of the steps together. It just makes more sense. It's um, less time and when you're trying to move a lot of clay, you gotta kinda do more to it. So as you can see, I'm using that inside hand to gently press out. I'm coming up at the same time, so I'm um, creating a little bit more rounded shape to the exterior of the piece. And 
and I'm gonna come back with my um, ruler to measure this up. I'm right where I wanna be, about 11 inches if I want this to shrink down to 10 inches, and I'm about two and a half inches tall. Things are looking a little bit thick still, so I'm gonna come out just a little bit more and come up just a little bit more with this, adding a little bit more water to my walls so that I don't stick, right? Sticking as you're moving through this process with a larger piece of clay can be really, really hazardous for the piece. And I like to leave the rims on pieces like this a little bit more substantial. Right, larger piece, larger rim, kind of frames the piece at the same time. Let's see where we're at now. We're probably a little wider. Yeah, we're closer to 12 inches now, which is fine. And two and a half tall. The bottom diameter is roughly seven and a half to eight inches. So we're gonna let this go at this size since we're just doing rough estimates. And I'm taking off the extra clay that's built up around the bottom with my angled knife. First at an angle like this, flush up against the edge of that pot, and then coming back and flipping the tool so it's flat against the wheel head, right? Two different motions with this tool, flipped up against the wall and then flat against the wheel. This is a, a great skill to learn, just to remove the excess clay because it makes the trimming process later a lot easier. And as you can see, just by taking a look at the profile, it really reveals um, more of what the piece is gonna look like in its fish, finished state. And the more proficient you become at throwing, the less clay there will be to take off. Um, although with larger pieces, there's usually a, a little bit of rooting system that's happening, holding that piece onto the wheel. And then finally, I go back with my red mud tools, rib tool, and I take away that extra slip layer. I'm gonna do the same thing on the inside with the rounded side of this tool starting from the top. And just very gently with hardly any pressure because I'm not trying to reshape the bowl at this point. I'm just trying to remove that slip layer. There's just a good amount of wet clay that isn't really serving any purpose at all. So this helps not only just smooth the surface of the piece, especially if you want to put um, a hand painted or a decal design in the bottom of your work. You really need a nice smooth surface. It's not going to conflict with those, those uh, decoration techniques. And then one final little swoop with the sponge along the rim. And this piece is finished running the wire tool just to release it from the bat surface, but I'm going to leave it on this bat to dry. Really gotta make sure you keep that wire as tight and flush under the pot for larger pieces as you possibly can to avoid um, losing more of the base than you need to. And then just one quick wipe with a sponge. I find this helps me clean my bats later if I try to keep them a little bit more clean. Right, and there we go. Shallow serving bowl. So next up, is our dip bowl. And I've done lots of chips and dips over the past <laughs> several decades. Um, and this is a one and a half pound piece. Some are attached. Some people like attached chip and dippers. Other people like separate. So this is just a very versatile set that can be used in a myriad of ways in and around the house. So a pound and a half, again, starting the centering process, I'm throwing on a bat. I, I tend to throw all my work on bats. I just find it's um, a little bit easier. Sometimes I'll throw on a bat and I'll remove the piece and put it on a tile. Right, so I'm starting off with a piece that's centered to about three inches in diameter, just for your reference. And then I'm digging and sweeping my hand up to open. So this bowl is gonna have taller sides. Well, it's a smaller in scale size bowl. So the sides are gonna to appear to be a bit taller. So I wanna get that rounded shape in the base of this bowl. And how I achieve that is pressing down at an angle. So rather than going straight down like you would for a cylinder, I dig at a bit of an angle until I reach the center of the pot. And then I scoop my fingers up that inside wall, right? Instead of just pulling straight across the base like you would for a cylinder. So I've dug at an angle, I've scooped up. I'm gonna go back with my sponge give a little bit of compression to the base and just smooth things up. 
make sure things are staying centered. Add a bit of fresh water, clean up the slip along the outer edge and start to bring my walls up. So most of this lifting happens from the outside, right? It's the outside hand that's doing the bulk of the work here, but the hands have to work in unison with one another. Making sure your hands always stay connected to each other, making sure your body is stable, right? It's important to be really grounded when you're making pots. And you can see I rest my forearms on the edge of my bat or my splash pan to make sure that I'm really rooted and I can't move. And then my hands are always staying connected to each other. Right, and so this will give you a six inch by two and a half inch bowl. I'm gonna clean this up the same way I did the previous one. Quick little skim coat with a rib tool. Little skim coat here. And I'll finish this up the same way, wiring it and removing it from the wheel. So thanks for watching guys. I hope that was helpful to you. Please um, check me out at theveganpotter.com. Shoot me an email if you have any questions and I'd be happy to help. Take care.